question when you guys, when you when you in, engage in your process, is it kind of like dancing? Does does one guy lead and the other guy follow, and then and then it switches roles, or mm-hmm. how, how does how does yeah. that work? And and do do each of the albums have their own ratio of 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 sort of who drove the songs, or or how does that work? You know, initially it was a back and forth. Rio Sweet was very much kind of a back of back and forth. Mm-hmm. Water Sky um, was really kind of more piano driven, so I guess you'd say it was more me driven. Phil was very much part of that, and and uh, it's very much it's definitely a collaborative work uh, record. Uh-huh. I think mm-hmm. on Cappadocia, that weirdly though was the first uh, record that we made. Listen to me saying records. Um, ah, that's that's. that's- that's what you call them. I, I don't care. The kids yeah, can call them. You know what I mean. Want. Yeah. They're records. Um, and maybe someday we'll make a record out of those. But um, mm, uh, nice. that was the first, uh, I think, real collaborative work where we, we we literally said, okay, there's eight. We always do eight songs. Phil's going to take four of those and kind of initiate it. And I'm going to take four of it. And that's the mm-hmm. way we did it. And that's the way we did it on, on Ravenna. I think Ravenna it leans a little bit more towards Phil, which is really cool because... Um, uh, it, it just makes it different, but but really now mm-hmm. I think the collaboration is is very much a 50-50 situation where where for instance mm-hmm. I'll I'll have, I'll come up with an idea, and I'll send it to Phil because mm-hmm. we're never in the same room, and then Phil will add his bits, send it back to me, and we'll go back and forth that way. And in Phil adding his bits, he'll often take the idea completely right or completely mm-hmm. left, mm-hmm. or up or down, whatever, and then I'll I'll have to jump in and and join him on that and vice versa. Yeah. So it's really, really fun. And one of the things I, I, I concentrate on doing on the songs that Jeff uh, initiates uh, is I, I'll go off on a rabbit trail, but then I like to bring his theme back toward the end. So I'm very mindful of keeping it consistent. So, oh, we're coming back to this theme, yeah. uh, which you'll, you'll notice on a number of the songs. Uh, track number five, which would be Mosaic Five, is really yeah. interesting because I took it so far left, it, it, it took it into a bit of a uh, deep purple Pink Floyd uh, kind of a place, didn't yeah, it? I even, I, even, I even lifted a, a, a lick from the animals, we got to get out of this place. <laughs> you know, in that... And, 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 and Jeff, man, he got the great keyboard sounds and the B3 and everything. And um, all these pieces are individually created like children, you know, they're like yeah. eight kids. And uh, in fact, at the end of the album, we were saying, you think we've had enough kids, uh, which is kind of an odd thing to say. But, it, but th- <laughs> well, these tunes are they're like children. And we were, and we the great thing about that I love that that's a great description Phil we dedicated it to our grandkids uh, Ravenna yes we so did. that was that's kind of cool what goes around comes around you know and, and Town's little brother did arrive six days I, ago I know I saw that's fantastic news. oh it's great. beautiful boys so, named Ezra yeah, now it, awesome. then this is a true twenty first century process because you guys have not been in the same room at the same time recording is that how this works yeah 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 completely yeah. yeah. Um, there's there's a there's a level of musicianship, a level a level of technical ability. There's a level of musical experience and compositional experience, <laughs> but most importantly, there's this level of trust um, yeah. and yeah. and just enthusiasm for each other's ideas. Um, mm-hmm. I, I've had this a few times, like with my friend Brian Dunning and a couple other people, but it's rare actually, and that's really what drives it. Um, and without that trust, you know, Phil and I, we, we clashed on a couple things on this album. When I say clash, I don't mean like, you no, know, no, no. yelling there, at each other. But, there, but we, we, there's, there's no, it's not animosity clashing. It's what's going to serve the song best. And you need to get, you need to work that out. Yeah. Well, I mean, let exactly. me give you a specific example. I mean, um, Phil has always wanted to have a real drummer or a real percussionist on our, on our albums. And I've always really kind of said, well, yeah, that would be cool. I see that, uh, but I, it's really us. We've it's always been us. So there's been this thing in my head. It's got to be just us. And so uh, whether I'm doing the percussion loops and stuff like that, or Phil, we're doing that, right? Phil's playing bass, all this stuff. I'm playing keys. We're singing, you know. But you know, we were on. We were working on the last, the last uh, song, Mosaic Eight, and it was Phil's. And there's there there's these sections that really needed. 
I, I couldn't do it. I couldn't nail it. Uh, and, and finally, I just threw my, threw my hands up in the air and I said, okay, you win. Uh, I'm going to call <laughs> my friend, I'm going to call my friend, Mike Snyder and you guys talk and, and Mike, long story short, did a fantastic job. And yeah. that, that made me think, um, well, there's, there's two other songs that were completely done, mind you, that Phil, I knew Phil was frustrated. I knew he was frustrated with it. And so I called Mike and I said, could you listen to these two songs? I know you can improve upon them, but can you just tell me if this will work for you to do? And he called me right back and says, oh man, this would be great. So uh, I knew I didn't need to Phil's permission to do that. But you know, I think that opened up a doorway for us, um, Lord willing, if we continue to collaborate in the future, I, I, I wouldn't hesitate to bring somebody see, like Mike in. That's part of the trust because yeah. when, you're, when you're in the thick of creativity, I know I've had this conversation with producers, especially with uh, Roy Salmon, who I work with now. Yeah. And, mm -hmm. and we're, there's never any animosity, but, but we'll sit down and he'll go, this needs this. And I go, no, no, it's done. <laughs> it's done. We didn't need that. Or, yeah. or he'll play a patch and I'll go, I don't like that. Well, what do you do like? Yeah. And I said, well, unfortunately, I'm a college degreed expert on what I don't want. But I can't quite tell you what I do want. We have to keep, we have to keep searching around until we find it. That's and then great. we'll come upon something and we'll both nod our heads and go, yeah, yeah, yeah that's the one. Yeah. And so there's, there's, a, there's a bit of give and take. And it's, that's part of the collaborative process. And you have to trust and not take personally when, it, when a guy kind of says to you, nah, it's not my favorite moment. We, let's try this instead. Yeah. You know, <laughs> You have, you, have to, you have to really like each other, and, and I know you do, so that it, it yields the good stuff. Yeah. The leaves had fallen, and we were at the end of fall. I mentioned earlier in our early uh, interview that I love doing yard work. Well, I ended up doing yard work for my yard and for a couple of my neighbor's yards who, who the guys have just had knee operations or having hip issues. And <clears throat> so I said, man, I love to do them. So I, I mow the grass, and I, and, and I rake up the leaves, and I, I, I invited my son to come over and he got a trailer. We loaded up 56 bags of leaves uh, at, at the end of three days of working. And I listened to uh, all four albums on random mode, wow. which meant it would jump from one album to the next. But, I, you know, it was the soundtrack to my uh, leave raking. Uh, <laughs> The four uh, albums you know, there, I did with Jeff. There, there's your, beautiful. There's your marketing tag right there for the new album, ladies and gentlemen. I, I believe Phil's just done that. Yeah, music to rake leaves by. Uh -huh. hey, nothing wrong yeah, with that. It, 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 it was good. I mean, I just wanted to listen and keep working. And I, I loved, I loved it when you told me about that because yeah. that's indicative. I think of all three of us. Actually, I know Bob well enough. I think I can say this. We all listen to music. We grew up listening to albums. We grew up really intensely listening in front of really nice speakers mm -hmm. or as headphone mm -hmm. technology developed. Yeah. Um, and when Phil and I craft these, we're actually crafting albums that we will like to listen we'll to. like to listen to. <laughs> <laughs> Completely. Sure, yeah, so sure. I think I love that. I love that idea, you know. Well, you know, and that's so true. And as, as Jeff and I mm -hmm. have spoken offline, uh, Phil, about what a complete musical savant you are, not only in your own <laughs> right as an artist, but this encyclopedic knowledge of like artists and songs and music and riffs and stuff. It's awesome. I would just, I would just love to come over to your house and play anything you'd want me to hear for the reason yeah. and, and find out why. I mean, to me, that would be an entire afternoon. But <laughs> before we were ever musicians, we were grateful listeners and you never lose. Yeah, completely. There's, no, there's, no, nothing, there's nothing like in my world, in folk boy world, there's there's nothing <laughs> like a great four minute, well written Jimmy Webb song. Yeah, there you, you know, go. To make yeah. to make you go, this is why I love this so much. And you see, know, we we was, all bring that we all bring that experience of listening and our life experiences to the music that we make. You know. Uh, that's a really mm -hmm. important part of, of, and particularly in this case, Phil and I are making instrumental music. People say, well, you know, what's the inspiration for this? Well, there's inspirations like Ravenna. That, there's always been a sense of place in our music, right? Mm -hmm. But at some point, it really, it becomes more than whatever that place is. It, it's, it, we are bringing our life experiences. That's why the mosaic idea was kind of a cool idea. That's why we didn't, mm -hmm. that we didn't title any of the songs. We just called them mosaics, you know? But each of those songs, I guarantee you there's a connection 
there's a musical connection, there's a life experience connection that each Phil and I, each, each idea that we came up with, mm -hmm. there's something in the past that's there. And that's what I think what gives <clears throat> them their, their depth, their subtlety, their richness, you know? Mm -hmm. uh, and that's a really important thing. We bring all these experiences to our music. One of our friends who works in publicity, uh, Benita Teams, when she first heard Frio Sweet, I gave her a copy of it. She said, Phil, this album took me back to my childhood, mm. took me back to some important moments in my life. And it's, it's amazing what music does. You, you, you can't quite understand how it is, but there is a connection to memory and uh, emotion and all this stuff, even if it's a new composition, yeah. uh, because it's all wrapped around these eight notes, you know, and everything in between these eight notes and all the rhythms and all the, the cadence and all the, the variables of music touches a chord in people's hearts and their memory. Um, and that's why I think I love it when I hear about a young person learning a new instrument, learning an instrument or and, and developing that gift because it, you know that's what god called us to do is to be creative as he is creative yeah and also i think people who have instruments in their hands of music um it, it, it's a safer way to live life and uh, mm -hmm. i think it's a good it's, it's a good life to be a musician does that make sense to you guys oh that's suppose? beautiful that's beautifully said and, yeah in other, in other words you're taking up an instrument rather than arms of huh. some sort amen you yeah. know arming yourself with a musical instrument that can bring healing to a soul and that's what i do love about this music there are moments where it's just very emotional for me and um, I'm yeah. so proud to be a part of these, these four albums that we've done. And uh, they're very special to me. Yeah, you know, you, you, you said something there, Phil, and I, I believe Bob and I have talked about this in the past, that um, for me, uh, music is the way I have worked out my demons, worked, out, worked through various times in my life where um, I've just been able to, by being able to express it creatively, whatever I was dealing with, I was able to kind of get it out of me. And, um, you know, I don't want to get into too much the psychology of that or whatever, but I mean, I know your guys' music and I know you guys have done the same thing with your music um, throughout your life. You've, you've been able to deal with a lot of things in your life uh, through by expressing your music. And consequently, a lot of people have been able to like our music because we're expressing things that they're relating to. And that's one of the things that um, is such a privilege to do this work is that the listener really brings the X factor that we cannot provide for ourselves. In other words, these things don't find their sense of completion and fulfillment and reason for being until they're heard and interpreted and the soundtrack for what other what other people's lives are about and that's that's the privilege to get mm -hmm. to make this soundtrack music you know as i always say i make soundtrack music for a movie i'm not directing that's that's, that's how great. i put it mm, that's <laughs> interesting we went out last night our friend tommy and shelly coombs took us out to dinner for my birthday last night cool and uh, we sat next to a couple and they were listening to our conversation a little bit and um and uh we said, well, we're celebrating uh, my birthday. I'm 70 years old and March 23rd. And the couple, the, the wife of the couple, it was her birthday too. So, <laughs> you know, so we had that in common and we got to talk a little bit and share a little bit. And I said that I'm a musician and I just happened to have a, a Ravenna CD in my bag. <laughs> and, 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 I, and, I, and I signed Here. it to them. There it is. <laughs> I said, if, hey, I asked them, do you like music? Uh, they said, oh, yeah, absolutely. And they never heard of me or Jeff, but uh, I, I shared the CD. I said, I think you'll find this really restful and, and nice to listen to. Hope you enjoy it. So like Bilbo Baggins, I gave away a present on my birthday. <laughs> That's great. Mm -hmm. 